thank you. Thank, thank you for coming out. It is a big night tonight, isn't it? Yeah. What's going on tonight? This lecture. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Brownie points. <laughs> Frontline. I don't know. Eight o'clock. The big drawing. Isn't the big drawing tonight for the, the red? So yeah, if you're not, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Okay. <laughs> that would be my laptop. Yay. Connect, yes. So my, my name is indeed Star. In case anyone was wondering, it's my real name. I am local Boston, so Star Dagen becomes what in Boston speak? Star. 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 Yeah, so I am Star Dagen. <laughs> Star, that's me, yes. And it is my real name. I have a birth certificate. I can prove it to you, okay? So it's not a stripper name. <laughs> uh <-huh. I> <laughs> and my parents are not hippies. I'm too old for my parents to be t hippies, okay? It is my real name, so I'll start there. And it is a horrible, horrible name to give someone who was born in this area who is very shy and very quiet. So can you imagine having the name Star? What do people say to you if you have a name like Star? What do you think? So, right. Get to the point. Get to the point? <laughs> They start. They sing. The last a couple weeks ago, one of the cashiers started singing "Star of the Day" to me, and all of Market Basket stopped and had to pay attention. None of these people know. It's an age thing. It's an age thing. Yeah. Or "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star." They know that one, right? There we go. Thank you. All right. So I was going to tell you my story in collaboration. So I I do know Jin, the speaker that you have next month. I I work with her. I've been working with Ginny for about ten years at Boston University. And she is really wonderful, really wonderful. So I do recommend if you can get to that, to get to that. She's a great person to work with, Ginny, Dr. Grimman. Um, so I'm going to tell you about collaboration. So the reason, there's a point I tell you about my name, Star. Really, I was so shy that my mother made me make friends. I had no friends until third grade because I was perfectly happy to sit and read and have no friends. So what does a, uh, you know, a reasonably smart person in this area do? for a career that has to support themselves. They become a software engineer, right? Because what do software engineers do? They sit in program and they don't have to talk to anybody, right? So I did that. I got a software engineering degree. It was easy. It was fun. I worked in the basement of a building. It was a research and development group. And in research and development groups, it was a speech technology group back in the 80s. OK, it was great. People would bring algorithms in and I'd do all sorts of stuff until something happened and I decided I no longer could stay in this group. So on my way out of this group, my boss, who I didn't really like very much, and in your, if you're in a research group, he says, here, you need to do this project. <coughs> projects weren't good because you had to collaborate in projects, right? You have to work with other people. So I only had two weeks left and he said, nobody else wants this project, you take it. I'm like, okay, I couldn't say no. I was very shy, very quiet. And he said, you've, you've got to collaborate and work with this company called Kurzweil. Kurzweil is a synthesizer, a musical synthesizer. So I had two weeks. I had a technician, a hardware engineer, a software engineer, and two people from this company called Kurzweil. And I had to write, let's see if the laser pointer, oh, this one, the laser pointer works. Is this the one that works here? Let's see. Hmm. Here we go. So see that little thing on the right side, that screen, that computer on the right side? So that was the software I did. So basically, Stevie Wonder was showing up at the Boston Park Plaza, and I had to connect the box, which was a text-to-speech machine, to the Kurzweil synthesizer, and have it so Stevie Wonder, who's blind, could type, and the, and the synthesizer would talk to him. So in two weeks, I did that project and did huge collaboration. I was forced to collaborate, and we got it done, and it was great. And I worked on the project for the next six months because I stayed at the company but went to another group. So that was my story of collaboration. So from that point forward, I realized that to move ahead, <coughs> you have to collaborate. Okay? So I teach that a lot. It's not easy. How many, how, well, we'll start this way. How many people think collaboration is easy? Raise your hand. Yay, okay, one, two, three, okay. It's not easy, it's not natural, but we hear it all the time, right? It's not easy, it's not natural. So I want to make this somewhat of an interactive presentation. So I'm going to start by doing an introduction exercise. With, if you can get in groups of two or three, I'm just going to give you like two minutes and shake hands with the person there and say your name, your company <coughs> role, where did you grow up, how many siblings do you have, where do you fall in the order, and what is the most important challenge of your childhood that impacts your business? 
So go ahead and meet the person next to you and say those things. Two minutes. I'll time you for two minutes. So if I could have your attention, could I have your attention? So the, there was a very, very distinct purpose for that exercise related to collaboration. Any guesses? There was a very distinct purpose for that particular exercise for collaboration. Any guesses? Common, goes first. Common ground, that's good. What? See who yeah. goes first. See who goes first. <laughs> you have to listen. You have to listen, that's true. Yeah, and ask each other. So this is actually an exercise that um, NASA uses when they introduce new astronauts to the world. If you uh, YouTube some astronauts, he'll say, hi, my name is Astronaut Star. I grew up in Acton, Mass. I have a younger sibling. I always wanted to be an astronaut. And I love math. So when I was a kid, I loved math. And I use that today. The reason, you could look up, it's an exercise from the five dysfunctions of teams. If you make someone human, if they are a real person, they grew up somewhere, they have siblings, they have childhood lessons, you are more likely to build trust and collaborate. The quicker you can make someone human, the quicker you can collaborate and build trust. So it's a really simple one minute exercise. This is great for virtual teams too, by the way. I, I've used this on virtual teams. And here's a little tip on collaboration. Start your virtual team meeting with something kind of personal. What holiday are you looking forward to? Or you know, whatever it is. Make them human, not a disconnected voice. Video's great too. So that was the purpose of that exercise, okay? And plus they told me to make it more interactive and I like it. <laughs> Excellent job. Well, thank you. So uh, collaboration, here's the official definition. A purposeful relationship. So when you hear the word purposeful, hmm, okay, there's a point in which all parties strategi strategically choose to cooperate in order to accomplish a shared outcome. Sound about right? You don't have to like each other. You don't have to be friends. You don't have to keep the relationship up. That's collaboration. Of course, not everybody chooses to be on a project team. Sometimes you're assigned. That's right. That's right, absolutely. And you still need some work from them, right? So the more you make them human, yeah. that's true. The more you make them human, the more, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. So I want to tell you a story. And I just did a, I hope everyone has a handout now. All right, so I, I hope I can tell the story without you adding to it, because I'm going to add lip a little. OK, all right, it's OK. It's all right. You need a handout. Uh, handouts, or, there were some that went back there. Extras are there. All right, so I know it's hard to imagine, but there is a Red Sox game tonight, OK? <laughs> And pretend it was about 40 years ago. 40 years ago, if you remember, if you were at Boston University, there used to be five roads that came into one, and you had to like all just fight. You're smiling. You remember this? Yes. Five roads. It wasn't a road degree. There wasn't traffic lights. Five roads, they just kind of like boom, smashed into one, and you, only one lane would go over the bridge to get you to the park. I see some people remembering this. So can you imagine that? Five lanes coming into one, no traffic lights, no rotary, and there's only one lane that goes over the mass pike to get to the game. All right? So this chart that you're looking at up here, which kind of relates to what you have down there, is that this is an XY grid, if you think of it that way. So on the Y side, we have concern for task. Typically, project managers, accountants, engineers, I'm generalizing, not true for everybody, OK? really care about tasks, getting stuff done. Like, is it done? When will it be done? When will it happen, right? OK. So now imagine that you care about the task, high task, low relationship. And you want to get to that Red Sox game, because only one car can go over the bridge at one time. And you need to get there, because the game's going to start. What do you do? And you're a competitive person. Care about the task, not about relationship. You what? Lean on the horn, put your foot on the gas. I mean, I even have a friend who has a city car. They have two cars. One, you drive in the city because it can get hit, right? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yes. So if all you care about is getting to the game and you don't care what car you crack into or who you piss off, lean on the horn and put your foot on the gas and go. And no eye contact. No eye contact. That's right. <laughs> no eye contact. <laughs> Absolutely. That's compete. That's a natural style for some people. Okay? 
Now let me go down to, I'm going to go to accommodate. This is a golden uh, retriever. If you've ever had a golden retriever, they're like, whatever you want, whatever you want, whatever you want. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just follow you around. They're lovely, lovely dogs. Lovely dogs. Accommodate, it's all about relationship, right? So imagine you're at this place. There's five cars, and all you care about the relationship is with all the other people at the park. What do you do? Exactly. You go. No, you go. You go. Come on. Everybody go. I don't want you to be late. Go ahead. Right? So that, that was actually kind of normally my style. I had to work to overcome that to be a project manager, um, to let everyone else. So you, you don't get there, but everybody else wins. Relationship wins. Right? All right. Then we go to the turtle, the withdraw. You don't care about the relationship. You don't care about the task. So what do you do? Go home. The what? Don't even try to make it out. Just stay home. Stay in your shell, right? All right. Then there's what I call the typical project manager. There's the co compromise. This is typically what we do as project managers. Um, what might you do if you're compromising in that situation, trying to get to the ballpark? Take turns. Take turns. Exactly. So relate this to project management. You know, you want it. You want five features. And you want it done in five days. Well, how about if I give you three features in six days? Does that sound familiar? Yeah. So compromise. Not everybody gets what they want. All right. So now let's go to collaborate, because that's what we're talking about tonight. So collaborate is the win-win. It's high relationship, high task. So what might a collaboration look like to get everybody, everyone wins? What might a collaboration look like? <coughs> So I can envision, I'll tell you how I think it might look like, is that we all know who's coming to the game. And let's say we all know who the ticket holders are. It's like, OK, you're going to drive in and arrive at 1 o'clock. You're going to arrive at 2 o'clock. You're going to arrive at 3 o'clock. We're going to shut down the city of Boston. We're not going to let anybody except Red Sox people go into that. You're going to arrive at 4. Do you know how much work, hard work that is? Contact everyone. Put a schedule in place. Um, don't let other people come in. But the results? We all get there on time. We've collaborated with the city. We've collaborated with each other. We've created a plan. So my point, collaboration is hard work. It's not easy, and it's not natural for a lot of people. Okay. Could you see yourself in any of these scenarios? Do you know what you are naturally? Any guesses? No? Your team, cultures, it's individuals and it's teams, too. Some teams are more competitive. Some are more uh, avoiding. Do you want to be collaborative all the time? Neither is right or wrong. It's all situational. Is it worth doing that? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. You know, so for example, in an emergency, guess what? Competition is the right thing. It's everybody get out now. Don't care about relationships. If you're trying to build a relationship, relationships are probably better. All right? So it's important to understand that the collaboration is hard. It's not easy and not natural. So actually, here's the chart that I handed out to you. In case you are interested and you think about your style, this is just mapping it to Disc or Myers-Briggs. You know, it doesn't matter what you map it to. But just to get an idea of what my style is, what someone else's style is. You know, and there's a summary. I wanted you to have a summary of all the different types here, too. That collaboration is everybody wins. OK? All right, so I want to talk about this, too. Agile and Waterfall, what do you think? You guys are project managers. I haven't been a project manager in a long time. What's the latest on the debate? <laughs> Listen to that laugh. <laughs> what does that mean? What is that? What's in that laugh? Good question. What do you mean the debate? The debate continues? Yeah. I think from what I've seen at least in software development, everyone's trying to move towards Agile, but nobody really knows what Agile is. So everyone just has their own interpretation of how to do Agile. So it ends up being just kind of a, not a free-for-all, but Free for all? Interesting interpretation of what actually Agile is. Yes. Yeah, if you look up Agile, you get 100 different versions of it out there. And every company I've worked with has a different version. And yeah. So we understand Waterfall. Go ahead. Well, for whatever it's worth, uh, the uh, Pimbox 6 edition yes. uh, has just finally gotten itself to utter, or I should say print the word Agile. That's right. In the Pimbox guide. That's right. First time ever. So I think that that's a start. Uh, Yep. Yep. So just an observation. I, you know, I think the world needs both, in my opinion. You know, in most, I'm assuming since most of you, how many are PMPs in here? 
pretty much everybody. Because you're here for the PDU, of course, of course. <laughs> ah, silly me, silly me, what was I thinking? <laughs> Um, so you get the <laughs> you, you get the whole concept of the waterfall. You all know that that's ingrained in you if you have your PMP. So when I look at the waterfall and think of it like uh, working with a construction, building a house, it's a very reactive life cycle if you think about it, right? Um, you you have to put the uh, foundation in and you get everyone to sign off before you can go to the next step because it's a physical thing. If you're you're in uh, fit, you, instead of software, right? Very physical. So by nature, the waterfall was developed by infrastructure, bridge building, all that sort of stuff, hardware. It is a reactive life cycle, yep. But agile, which, we, which I'm gonna play off of what you said, we're moving towards agile. There needs to be, everything's instantaneous, automatic. And so, so here's my bragging again, the poor people that sat at my table. I came from Foxborough. I was at the Patriot Place this morning. It was so cool. And Jonathan Kraft, if you don't know who he is, he's the, the owner of the Patriots was the opening speaker on technology. And so he talked about the technology that the Patriots use. And he talked about this amazing thing of um, um, 5G, he talked about 5G. He talked about putting biometric chips on players, you know, so you could see who's coming on and off the field. And um, the, the, the rooms that they have so they can simulate plays and strategies. It was fascinating, I thought it was fascinating. Um, but the point around Agile, it's in the moment, it's, it's proactive. Here's the data in front of us. Everything he was talking about was agile. You know, it's like, here's the pro, and he said, you know, like if in a game in the past, a player would get hurt, well, guess what? They'd have to come back to the office, do blah, blah, blah. But he says, before our plane lands and we get home, we figured out from the databases and the instant real-time data, who our backfill, who we're gonna backfill from a hurt player is. Agile, agile, lean, fast. It's proactive. Give me some data and I've got to do something with it now. Okay? Proactive. That's the word I'm going to use there. All right. So, collaboration. Building strong relationships. The secret. I am convinced. The secret. And I heard this all today and I've heard it a lot. Is that it's the three P's. I call it proactive, professional, positive. If you could not best friends again, it's about creating a purposeful relationship to getting something done. So if you learn, understand the behaviors, the techniques, the skills, proactive, professional, positive, trusted relationships is the secret to collaboration, makes it easier. So what does that mean? So I want people to think about that and what we're gonna do, I have tons of stories, but I want you, I have the cat and the dog, get the cat and dog, two different types, I love the picture. Um, <laughs> So rather than me tell you my stories, because I have lots of stories from project management and engineers, and I will tell you stories to fill in the gaps in the silence, but I want to hear some of your stories. So I want you to go back to the person that you had the conversation with, that you introduced yourself with. Um, and Gracie, why don't you join one of the groups, one of these group, this group of two, is that okay? And is it, does everyone have a partner or do you, are you, do you have a partner here? You'll join that group, okay. You'll just slide in there, okay. Yeah. Or, or you can, uh, whatever, <laughs> whatever. So I'm just gonna give you, you know, like three minutes, tell me what's your best tip to building proactive, not reactive. You need to, proactive means you go out and create that relationship. They don't come to you. The, the have you heard of, when I learned project, here, when I learned project management the very first time, it was a gazillion years ago, and it was a week-long course, and it was all about math formulas and everything like that. And the only formula I remember from the 1980s was ROI, relationship over issue. And that's what stuck with me in terms of project management. It's create the relationship first before you work the issue, right? So proactive is, I'm gonna come up and say, hey, how are you, nice to meet you guys. Isn't this great? And we have a conversation, we say, hi, where are you born? What are you doing? Go back to my cube. Two weeks later, oh no, we have an issue. And it's like, hi, remember me? So the idea is you've created the relationship because how many people, you walk up to someone as a project manager and the first time they've ever seen you, hey, did you get that done? And she has no idea who I am. <laughs> What's the response there? <laughs> Go away, she said it. Thank you for playing into it. <laughs> right, right. So, so many times as project managers, we walk up to people that don't know us, have never heard of us. You need to help me with this issue. And it's like, yeah, go away. 
So proactive is building that relationship first. So go to that group, and I'll give you three minutes. Come up with your best proactive tip. Go ahead. <laughs> Let me. I'm timing you. Okay, if I could have your attention back. If I could have your attention back. So let's get, let's get a couple of the brilliant ideas. Let's get a couple of the brilliant ideas. Brilliant ideas. Brilliant. Who wants to show? Okay, maybe, okay, it doesn't have to be brilliant. How about just good? Let's get a couple good ideas thrown out. Proactive. Proactive. Even in the building, if I did not see this person before, yep. I try to say where this is person. How are you? Yeah. Right, that's so great. I try to because I wouldn't know whether I'm going to work with this person. Yes. Before. There was no expectation. I do this also in my real, uh, in my personal life. Reach out. Reach out to people, but my wife makes a comment that you will have some, you know, selfishness right. in you. You know, I don't care, but <laughs> I don't want, you know, I don't want to go to someone asking for help, but I would rather ask someone who's already in touch with. That, that's the ROI, right. relationship over issue. Right. Yes. That's something I try to do, and if I know them before, yes, I still ask them about just having right. insight. That's great. Them. So it's not natural to everybody. There's many people that I, I work as a coach that I have to say, go create this. That was one of the best tips that a coach gave someone. Go create, have coffee, say hi, reach out to somebody that you might not normally. And yeah. And the topics, so we have plenty of topics. Plenty of topics. Patriots. For you to chit chat. Ah, so <laughs> learn to chit chat. Exactly. I've taught people to chit chat. I'm not an expert at it, but I, I learning chit chat's important. It starts the connections. That's great. One more, and we'll go to the next one. Yeah. Family again. So the introduction. Yeah. We did family, right? You were born someplace. You have a sibling. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's another tip. Go back to your office. If you have no, nothing personal in your office, put something personal in it. I, I literally worked with a guy who got laid off every year and a half because he never had anything personal in his office. And he had no personal connections to anybody. And it was so easy to lay him off. I'm, I mean, it's sad and funny, but serious. Okay. <laughs> so, so now I make sure when I'm working with someone, go put some pictures up. <laughs> put something. I, I'm joking, but it's true. Okay, so proactive. Um, I have tons of hints. Uh, if you are an engineer and you love this web of influence, create the map of all the people you need to make a relationship that will help you succeed and reach out to them on a regular basis. Intentionally do that. So I'm going to jump ahead here. I will say yes, chit chat tea. Professional. All right, so I'm going to talk about professional. It's, it's not best friends, but it's professional. What's your best tip to build professional relationships? The one I'll start you with is that what are the conversations that the people above you are having about companies and industries? What is the conversation about Agile and Waterfall? You know, what are the interesting conversations about uh, security, uh, Google, all that sort of stuff? Have something in the back of your mind that you're interested in that you can converse in. Um, what's the company that does, is it Jira? Do you know Jira? It's a, a tra a rep yeah, you know Jira, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, the company that makes Jira, uh, Al Alantia. Yes, I went and told my husband about it. He looked it up, he bought stock in it, and they're his best stock in his portfolio. <laughs> so, so that's some of my chit chat that I do around professional <laughs> building. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you three minutes again. Go ahead and go back and have a conversation about professional relationships. What's your tip? that you might tell someone, here's how you build a professional connection to collaborate. So go ahead, two minutes I'll give you. Okay, timer's done, timer's done. So professional was a little bit harder for some. Let's get a couple of tips what, that you wanna share. A couple people wanna share some of their tips for building professional relationships. We've got, go ahead. Do what you say you'll do. Oh yeah, be true to your word. Do what you say you'll do. So it, that's about credibility, building trust. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Anyone else? Professional, lunch and learns. Um, common industry, common profession. What else, anyone? Social networking. Create a project management Facebook group for your company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Do you know how much power project managers would have if they all came together in a company? We have that. You do? You, you do? Yeah. Okay. How does that work out? It's 
good. Okay. We, we usually get together once a month to either watch webinars or just chat about yep. whatever we're working on. That's great. So you're starting to collaborate, build relationships. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's great. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to flip through mine really quick. Um, there's the industry chit chat. So learn how to chat about industry stuff, whether it's your industry or profession. Um, attend their meetings. Invite them to your meetings. Um, professional, find if you're a project manager, find a friend and a, a marketing person, a sale, befriend a salesperson. <laughs> um, get a mentor or a mentee. It's another way to build professional. Um, knowledge sharing, lunch and learns, common goals. Um, if <laughs> There's the Pinbox 6, actually. So if indeed you, you're at a stand, we both work for the same company. We both do this. We both do that. Find that in place. OK, positive. Now, this one's my favorite because obviously this is the topic of my book, gratitude, which is all about creating positive environments. So um, the opposite of positive is negative, right? Um, in the human brain, there's the fight, flight, or freeze. You know that response when someone's yelling at you? You either yell back, you freeze, or you run away. Not, or you stand up and say, positive, well, that's inappropriate behavior yelling. Let's figure out how we're going to have this conversation. Just from a place of calm, peaceful gratitude. That's what positive creates in collaboration, okay? So let me see my tips. Should I do? I do want to talk about this one, actually. So I brought the book. This is a new book. And this is one of my favorite books. I just read it, Work Inspired by Aaron Ain. He is the CEO of Kronos. And when, when I wrote my book, I did a lot of research, like uh, research, scholarly research, reading all these books. I teach leadership and all sorts of stuff. But I couldn't find at the time anything that really referenced positive environments. So um, this just came out like October 1st. And I put some of the things up here. What he talks about, this is what I think is really important in terms of positive. So he's been the CEO for 10 years. It was a, and he, in the 10 years, it's a privately held company, and it's now like a $1.5 billion company, and they like are on top of Glassdoor. So they're, they're one of the best places to work. They have this great vibe. And, I, and I, work, I work, I coach many of the middle managers and technical people there. So I know that they're not just saying it. I know that this is true, because I've seen it firsthand. But I want to point out this last piece right here, because I think this is really important. In the book, it says, I wanted Kronos to be nice to people, like positive nice, which of course we did, but I was convinced that focusing on people and culture was the soundest business strategy. So he attributes a positive work environment, a positive culture, to creating that amazing business model that they have and the revenue that they have coming in. Right? And there's all sorts of things he does, and one of the sections talks about creating a culture of thank you. And he talks about all the things that they do. And some of the things, and I know not everybody works in a great company where the culture is like that. But the point is, with gratitude, with positivity, it can start with you and your team. That's what I always loved about being a project manager, is that a project manager is kind of a little island. And you get to create the culture on your team that can be separate from the big culture. You know, it's like, this is the culture. These are the rules. This is how it's going to be, OK? So even if the big culture is like that, you get to create that culture, all right? All right, so I just want to leave, let's see. So positivity, um, I'm going to give you one minute. How's that? What's your best tip to create positive relationships? So go ahead, one minute with each other. I know we're running out of time. That's why I'm watching the clock. OK, that's a minute. Thank you. <laughs> so, so. Th this would have more, more energy around it, I think. Let's hear some of your ideas. Let's hear some of your ideas. Stories, ideas. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, we were talking about uh, assuming positive intent. A I lot love of times it. people come with a negative attitude. Yep. It's easy to think, oh, they're out to get me and kind of reflect that back on them. But if you can step back and say, they might be coming from a, a rational standpoint. <laughs> So assume positive. positive intent, yeah. right? So stay in that place of positivity yourself, mm -hmm. rather than and, and catch it when you jump to the assumptions and the judgments. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a really big thing. At the core of it is catching it. Yeah. That's great. That's good. What else? I can add uh, something related to it, which I happen to give my coach is uh, 
I happen to have this kind of emotional conversation, our collaboration, I could uh -huh. call it. That's great. With my other team members, so it's the same thing, how to mention, right? They're not trying to do or uh, ask anything for their own personal purpose. So it's for the project, so she asked me to say, okay, it's for the sake of the project, so they're not going to gain anything out of this personally. So it's another way to look at it, right? As positive also, intent. Positive intent, and also it's a shared objective, shared goal. So we're all trying to work for right. the project, so it's nothing bad, it's nothing personal. Yeah. So always, as a project manager, always bring it back to the goal of this meeting is, the goal of this project, the goal. So when you bring it back to that common purpose, it removes all the other stuff and get agreement on the goal. That's a great way to bring it back to a common purpose and create more positivity. That's great. Anyone else? Just um, active listening. Yes. Just kind of reiterating what, yes. you know, where their, stand, their stance and just like understanding them. And I hear of, you. Yeah, I understand you. Yeah, exactly. So if someone keeps saying the same thing over and over and over and repeats it, my suggestion is they think you're not hearing them. So you do active listening. It says, I heard what you said. Active listening is very good. See how I used her words back at her? So a way to create that positive connection is use their words when you play it. I heard you. I heard you say this, this, and this, especially if they're repeating things over and over. That way they know you. Most people don't feel heard in meetings at all. And when people feel heard, it creates a more positive environment. So yeah, anything else? Oh, we got a lot now. We'll get one more, okay. On that same note, I heard uh, James Comey speak. Uh huh. And he was talking about a conversation he had with Obama when he was in the White House. And he said that one thing he did was when he would talk to you or listen to you, he'd always make noises. He'd grunt or just, uh huh, uh huh. Mm -hmm. I know what you, uh -huh. Acknowledgement, acknowledge. And, and people would open up. It would just like start free flowing. When you're quiet, people fill in the space and talk to you. Right, exactly. right. I hear you. It's like I hear you. Keep going, keep going, keep going. That's great. And there was another person. Yeah, we we uh, thought no gossip. Oh, and if I agree. there is a, an issue where that's, that comes up where you're talking about somebody on a professional level, then you go and to that person or Direct. Go directly to the person. To, yeah, for, to coach them, to bring right. them back on the team. You don't want to separate anybody out from the team. That's right. So I, I have two things to say is that I agree. I hate gossip. I, I had to learn, learn. I had to learn collaboration. The point of my Stevie Wonder story is I had to learn to collaboration. It didn't come naturally. And so I had to learn as a manager. People would complain about other people. And I, I had to learn to say, you know what? Don't talk to me about this person until you have talked to them directly. And then if you do, two of you come to talk to me together. I had to learn to do that. So, so absolutely, but with the gossip, I have to tell you, it is important to listen to the gossip grapevine. Um, you don't have to play into it, you don't have to forward it, but it's important to hear that. You know, I have a really quick story where I, I had a, a, a cost center, a bunch of money that I, I managed millions and millions of dollars, and um, the product manager for my product was sleeping with my competing person, and I didn't know that because I wasn't listening to gossip. So my budget money was getting messed with on multiple ways. <laughs> so, so I started my meeting by saying, you know what, I just want two minutes of gossip. Just tell me what you're hearing on the streets. I'm not going to report it. I'm not going to forward it. But I, I need to know what's going on to manage. Oh, I wanted to share that we actually didn't talk about as a group that I, that I got in a book I read recently, which was be the thermostat, not the thermometer. Like, you can only manage your own energy That's right. and what you bring into a meeting or a room. And if you, if you just do that within your control. Stay you calm, right. That's what a lot of this is, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I'm going to flip through mine really quickly. Is that I, I showed that. Right, thank you notes. Who, who gets thank you notes anymore? Can't, have you ever seen emails posted up on walls as opposed to if you send a thank you note or a tchotchke or something, people put it in their offices and keep, keep it? Isn't it? Yeah. It's like, oh. Yeah, so, so see, even that was a note from um, Aaron Ain to me. See, I kept it. So yeah. And my, those were my thank you notes. And um, learn how to positively interrupt. Interrupting is a skill. As a project manager, you have a duty to know how to interrupt in a positive way. Learn how to do it. It's a skill. Um, learn to say no without saying no. People hate the word no. You can say no without using the word no. <laughs> Disagree without being disagreeable. 
Um, build a strong gratitude muscle, of course. So that goes back to what you're saying. When you have a strong gratitude muscle, you're more calm. It's you become the. Th See the thermostat, not the thermometer. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. I, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> and ask to help if, if necessary. Find the funny. This was a joke about. Um, this is the Wang Towers, the Cross Point Towers in Lowell. Um, Kronos used to not be there, and they moved to the towers. Why? <laughs> to get closer to the clouds. Get it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can find <laughs> when people laugh, <laughs> it creates positivity. Um, and that's all I have here. Where am I going to end it? Um, don't. What, what about the don'ts? I guess the don'ts. Th these were all real cases. Don't laugh. <laughs> don't share. Share too much, TMI. I don't think project managers do that. I've never seen a project manager do that. They're actually short. Sure. <laughs> uh, assume you know the answer. Do all the talking. Forget to follow up. Get drunk. Yes, that happens. Look at your phone all the time. The biggest thing that people think they get disrespected for is if someone's looking at their phone. That's the story. You were talking about the stories earlier. Assume positive intent. It's not about you if they're looking at their phone. A lot of people assume disrespect. Forget to prayer. Forget to enjoy yourself. Um, give up because it's uncomfortable. And finally, in order for to collaboration to work, it's a learned skill. It's hard. It's not easy. Is it worth the? Where is it worth the collaboration? To get through the Red Sox game on time tonight? Yes, you would say yes. Yes, if you had tickets, yeah. So keep being pro proactive, positive, and professional to build the collab. Where where you need to collaborate to build that collaboration.